Do you think a literal reading of Genesis leads us to the idea that the the earth is flat? Uh, absolutely not. And, and there's no way you can get that out of the text of Genesis. I have a, a, a pastor uh, and a friend of mine uh, who's writing a series of articles right now refuting a lot of the so-called biblical arguments for flat earth. They're just not there. They're, they're, they're people who don't know how to exegete a text. Uh, with regard to uh, the firmament or the rakia, rakia is the Hebrew word for sky, and that's really what it means is sky. A uh, Hebrew scholar who's a friend of mine says the technical meaning might be something like stretched out thinness. Uh, but this idea, well, the rakia is a solid dome. Show me where the Bible says that, because it doesn't. I've read it from cover to cover. The Bible does not say the rakia is a solid dome. It says, but it talks about the vault of heaven. Yes, but it doesn't say it's solid. It doesn't say it's, it doesn't refer to it as a dome or something that's impenetrable. Uh, the, the Hebrew word really just means sky. And it's, it's um, God refers to the rakia as shamayim, which is another word for sky or heavens. And that, that apparently means they're interchangeable. If God calls one the other, then apparently they're the same, or at least very similar. They're synonyms. So this idea of, well, you know, it's got to be solid and it's a transparent dome. You're reading into the text. You're not reading out of the text. Or the idea that the Bible says the earth's flat, it doesn't. The Bible, it does indicate the world's spherical in passages like Job 26, 10, where um, it, it, it describes the Earth's terminator, which is the boundary between light and darkness where evening and morning occur, as being a circle. And that only occurs on a spherical world. And so as far as I can tell, the earliest the earliest written reference to a spherical planet is in the Bible. It's in Job 26, 10. And we think that's about, we think that's about 2000 BC that Job was written. Uh, it wasn't until about the 500s BC that the Greeks figured out that the earth is round, and they had good reasons for that. But as far as I can tell, the Hebrews, at least those that were consistent, knew about that even earlier, because Job's writing about that, and that's the oldest book of the Bible as far as we know, uh, in terms of when it was written. But uh, So yeah, that there's you, you certainly can read into the text anything you want, but you can't read out of the text. You cannot exegete a flat earth. From the scriptures and i'm happy to talk about if you want to go into some of the details some of the arguments they make i'm happy to talk about that uh, it's a little bit silly the church did not believe in flat earth throughout most of its history i mean you can always find a, a, you can find a crazy person here or there that believed almost anything but it was certainly not the position of the church educated people have known uh, since very ancient times that the world was round the idea that christopher columbus was out to prove that it's round that's a myth people knew the round was world was round at the time of columbus he just thought it'd be faster to go that way so uh, a lot of this stuff is just, it, it comes from, uh, it comes from the internet. And, and I, yeah. I, I, I've talked to flat earthers and I, and I've said, uh, uh, let's, let's be honest. Uh, where did you get this information? You saw a YouTube video. <laughs> it's, not like you re it's not like you've researched this. It's not like you've gone back to the Hebrew and Greek. No, you saw a YouTube video. And the thing about YouTube videos, there's nothing wrong with watching them, but you gotta be discerning because anybody can post a, a video on YouTube about just about anything. So gotta be careful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's good. So just uh, just for fun, uh, because I, I it, it's remarkable to me how many, you know, maybe there's not these, this, that many of them, but man, they're vocal. Um, so if, if you were to give a really simple scientific knockdown argument that you could, you know, elevator pitch, what, what would you say to somebody, you know, if you're going up an elevator and you want to knock down scientifically the flat earth, what, what would you give them? That's well, easy to do. Uh, there's there's a number of experiments you can do. I've got some listed on my uh, on my website, uh, biblicalscienceinstitute.com. Experiments you can do to test the shape of the Earth. And so that would I guess my first question is if you were wrong, would you want to know? Because a lot of flat earthers, it doesn't matter what evidence you present. They it's almost become a cult. They, they've gotten locked into this view, and it doesn't matter what you say. So it's, it's it, so my question would be if if you could do an experiment and yourself and test the shape of the Earth, would you want to do that? Would you be willing to do that? If they say yes, I'd say here's some you can do. If you live near the ocean, it's really easy. If uh, you go out, let's see if you're if you're on the Pacific coast, you want to do it at sunset. You're you're standing there, uh, you're you're, uh, you're lying down on the beach, watching the sunset. And as soon as the sun sets, as soon as it goes below the water, stand up. You'll see a second sunset. It'll take an additional seven seconds for it to set, and that's due to the curvature of the Earth. The difference between when you're lying down and when you're standing up, it takes an extra seven seconds due to the curvature of the earth. And that, in fact, that was one of the first um, uh, calculations that I did when I was a, a freshman in college. We had to calculate the size of the earth based on the seven different, the seven second difference between when you're lying down and when you're standing up. And you can calculate the size of the earth that way. I mean, on the East Coast, you do it at sunrise. You're standing up, as soon as the sun rises, you lie down, you'll see a second sunrise seven seconds later. 
yeah. <laughs> calculate not only the Earth's surround, you can calculate its size. Yeah. How how far away can you see Pikes Peak? When I when I was a kid, and I I, I was already I'd already knew something about geometry. I knew about trigonometry. We took a family vacation out from Ohio to Colorado. I was 16, and I remember calculating when should we be able to see Pikes Peak based on the curvature of the Earth. And it turns out it's about 140, 150 miles out that you can see the top of Pikes Peak. You can't see it further away from that because of the curvature of the Earth. So here's a simple test. Go to Dodge City and look west and see if you can see Pikes Peak. If the Earth's flat, it should be about, uh, what, about uh, four tenths of a degree. That's about the your, your finger at arm's length. You should be able to see Pikes Peak if the Earth's flat. But if you see nothing, the Earth's round. So there's an experiment you can do if you're willing to drive to Dodge. Lots of stuff like that that you can do, and I've got some of those on the website. So it's very easy to calculate the shape of the Earth.